Madhumita Kolkar, everybody. Give a round of applause. Just a few technical issues. So let me start. 
it's kind of like an anecdote from my personal life. So I was going on the metro one day. Um, that was back in Bangalore. So I, I have to play the piano. And I think he mentioned that. You guys can check me out on Instagram if you want. It's Madhumita Volker. So I play the piano and I was going on the metro and I was carrying with me this keyboard. So it's a significantly large keyboard, right? And Bangalore Metro on a weekday, so it was pretty crowded and it's unusual to see someone taking that kind of luggage, right? So the guy in front of me, he naturally felt a little bit intrigued to see that and he sparked up this conversation, which actually ended up becoming this really intellectually stimulating conversation. So I learned that he is actually a research student. He's doing a PhD research at Indian Institute of Science on the topic of AI safety. So he was telling me about all of this and I felt really fascinated. Like I, I didn't really know that that was actually a topic that has research and stuff going on on it. So the thing is, when I heard this, I felt really interested. So we were just talking about that and I got to know a lot of information. And actually that book which I just showed you, so um, this is a shout out to my friend Aditya, I don't know if this will be streamed anywhere, but he was the one who was kind enough to give those books. So yeah, so it's from a lousy afternoon intellectual conversation with a stranger where I actually began my interest towards AIC. So. So when you hear the topic artificial intelligence, mainly the thing that comes to your mind is what? Terminator, stuff like that. You know, we see AI being bad. That's what we think, dictatorship. That's what AI is gonna be. So the thing is, we're not seeing that publicly, right? We don't see robots taking us over and all that. So what a lot of people happen to think is that, you know, AI is never gonna reach that kind of standard and it's always just gonna be below us. It's gonna be mediocre. It's not gonna reach that i robot or terminator kind of stage but the thing is um so ai has exponentially increased like so much in the last few years when i was a kid the movie i robot came out and back then we didn't have all of these like the way we have technology right now and that at that time i agree it seemed a bit futuristic but right now when you come to think of it like the moment you wake up in the morning from your uh, daily morning YouTube recommendations or at the end of the day whether or not you're going get to get a loan from the bank or stuff like your AI assistant reminding you in the morning about all the tasks you have to do throughout the day and reminding you when you have to do them till your self-driving cars that take you to work every day. So the thing is we don't see this like visibly, not a robot dictating us, but AI is integrated into our life in each and every small way and we don't even see it. So that's the thing, you know, it's exponentially increasing so much and there's so much research and stuff that's going on, but as the end users, we don't really see what's going on in the background, right? So the thing is that in the future, if AI research and everything keeps going on like this, if our implementation keeps on increasing, the question is, what will, be, what will we be building in the future? What, or what have we already built that'll be aiding to what we will create in the future. So are we gonna create an AI that is benevolent or malevolent? So is it gonna be, as I have coined the catchphrase, is it gonna be a Wally or a Terminator? So let's get into AI safety. Okay. So when we're talking about the topic of AI safety, it can broadly be divided into four different categories along two axes. That is, we have our short term and our long term. We have our accident risks and our misuse risks. So when we're talking about short term accident risks, uh, we can take the example of a self-driving car. Like, I guess you guys might have heard about this Tesla car that crashed, which claimed to be fully self-driving. So that's a short term accident risk, and then it can be improved after that. So our long term accident risks, Okay, so that's what I'll be talking about a little later. That's the one which I'm particularly interested in, which could be harmful in the future. And we have our short-term misuse, uh, so deep fakes. I hope you guys know about deep, deep fakes. So, right? So there's this guy on Instagram, you know, you might have seen him. He holds this portrait of some celebrity like Leonardo DiCaprio, and then he takes it over his face, and then he just swaps faces. Or other people, right? Um, so that is what a deepfake is. 
And then we have our long-term misuse, which is an enabled dictatorship, so basically Terminator. So I hope you guys got how these examples are given. So, okay, time for a question. So seeing this, these kind of examples, can any one of you or maybe more give me an example that might fall in any one of these categories, you know? Just AI, and you just tell me which kind of, um, which category it falls into. So I'll give you a minute to think, and you guys let me know. Just raise your hand if you have an example. It can be anything. It could be wrong. Just an example. Uh, sorry? Autonomous mobile robots. Which category would that fall in? Short term. And the accident would be in the form of? Yeah, I couldn't guess that could be right. So what's your name? Rashmi. Hubi. Okay. So uh, Rashmi from Hubi, he will be getting the first book. Anybody else? Any example is fine. Yes. Yeah. of short term maybe weaponization of uh, robots is in here. Like targeted killing or something. something. Weaponization of? Uh, robots. Robots. Like targeted killing or... Uh, uh, they can identify the faces of some people mm -hmm. and then they can target them. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would be an accident. It would probably yeah. be targeted, right? I said misuse oh, in short okay. yeah. That could actually be long term misuse as well. So yeah, that's a good example. Uh, one. So, uh, good job. Thank you. Hey, you didn't mention your name. <laughs> so, yeah, this is too overwhelming with the book that I did this week. So, my name is Sujay Tadha and I work for Jenny Okay, thank you. All right, so let's move over to the next slide. Okay. So now we come to the question, when we're talking about AI safety, what is the most important problem? You know, when you're talking about artificial intelligence, we mostly, like, in our time right now, we're seeing only benefits of AI. We're not seeing anything actually bad happening, right? So the question is, according to you, what do you think is the most important problem when it comes to artificial intelligence? So you guys can, you guys can come. Okay, I see more hands now. Um, you were first. Yes. Sorry? Uh, can you describe that a little more? For example, uh, if you're building an autonomous weapon, mm -hmm. weapon kind of thing for the military, yeah. it should be accurate that uh, it could uh, not hit the, like, uh, it, it must hit the enemies. Yeah, accuracy, right? Uh, yeah. So you might end up hitting one of your yeah. people. Yeah, not, not okay, accuracy. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's a good point to be considered. So, uh, Raksha thought you can. So, other people? Yes. By the way, my name is Aditya Dev. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aditya. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Nina Dev. Uh, yes, so the last uh, time also I raised the hand because I want to uh, say something. So recently in the uh, US, hmm. a person uh, won a digital art competition using AI using DALI or some uh, deep fake image creation tool. Mm -hmm. So the problem here is, we cannot understand, is it the person or AI which is responsible for the art? Mm -hmm. So it is a really fascinating thing. It has won the competition over all other digital artists, but it is also scary what it is capable of. So that is, uh, I find the problem. Yeah, that's a good point, you know, uh, AI is, reaching human-like level, right? That's a very good point. Uh, 
I I'll ask you the question next. So I have more questions. I have to make enough books for that, right? So, so yeah. So, okay. So this is what I think is the main problem. So we will sooner or later build an artificial agent with general intelligence. So this this quote or whatever you want to call it, this has a lot of terms which I'll be explaining in detail. So when we're saying sooner or later, there is a question again, how sooner or later, right? When? So according to you guys, when do you think artificial intelligence will actually gain that kind of superiority where it, it might be able to take us over? <laughs> Anybody? Yes, over there in the back. Uh, yeah. Hundred years. Okay. You guys can take a guess, and uh, I'll give it to the person who is most accurate. How about we do that? Okay. Uh, over there in the back, the guy with the green shirt. Yes. Thirty to forty years for a hundred percent AI dominance. About thirty to thirty. Now the thing is, actually, even I don't know if I know an answer to this, but it's actually based on like experts and stuff. So you guys might be right. You know, another other way. So yes. Not possible. Not possible. <laughs> Why do you think so? probably start doing research in AI safety then, if you're uh, thinking that people will actually do that, that's exactly what this is, putting great points and measures to make sure that it doesn't happen. Yes? Sorry? When it gets the randomness of human thinking, mm -hmm. we start thinking, okay, the way we think is not structured, so mm -hmm. you think about this, then you think about this, then you come back to the second one. Yeah. Right? So if AI can do the same thing, I think that is when it can replace us. Mm. Yeah, basically becoming us, right? So do you have any time frame, you think? Uh, you want to lose? 100%, like, you know, you've watched Terminator, right? Yeah. It's like that. When it's actually like, or you see that in Iron Man, right, Jarvis? Like, yeah, so I don't think that'll ever happen. Like, an exact set of time uh -huh. because uh, if I if I if we go back ten years ago, I wouldn't say we in ten years I would have this technology right now. Mm. So I don't I don't really think we can give a particular date, but mm. when is when uh, it starts thinking like us? Yeah, yeah. That is the question. So thank you. That that's true. Exactly. So, huh? Seventy-five years. Who's answer? Your answer. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I got that. So, let's see. Okay. So this graph over here is a little bit washed out because it's from 2016, but this was like, it was a statistical survey kind of thing which was done among all these AI experts who have given like uh, global conferences, published papers and all. So when they took their collective opinion and saw, they saw that when we would reach human level machine intelligence. So human level machine intelligence is like what she said. When a machine can have a particular goal, just like a human being, and it can start taking actions in the real world to go further in its goal, you know? Achieving things just the way we do. So it can think on its own and just think like a human being, basically. So they saw that we would reach 50% in about 45 years. So again, that's from 2016, right? And this is 2022, so 39, probably. 39 years, we would probably reach 50% as what they said. But when you look at it like this, we would reach 10% in nine years. So nine years, that's basically like saying in another three years, we would be reaching 10% of human level machine intelligence, which actually seems a bit possible, doesn't it? Seeing everything that's increased already now, there are so many things we didn't think like, 10 years ago that that would happen. So it actually has happened, right? So yeah. So if you turn the questions around and ask them in a kind of different way, that gives us an estimate of around 
45 to 120 years. So 45 or 50%, and by 120 years, we should probably reach 100% of human level machine intelligence. So, yeah, uh, who's the one who said 100 years? You? Okay. You said 75, which I think is a little close, so you can make a book. All right, so, okay, so as I was saying, we will sooner or later build an artificial agent with general intelligence. So we saw sooner or later, artificial agent. So when we're talking about an agent, what exactly do we mean? So an agent is actually a topic from economics, and this is how you kind of broadly describe it. Agents have goals and choose actions to further their goals. Okay, so basically like human beings, like we have some particular goal and we do some kind of action to further our goal. So that's basically like the motto of how we function, right? So this is in the case of an agent. So. So we can take an example, I guess one of the most simple examples would be a thermostat. A thermostat can be an agent, so it has goals and it has actions. In this case, the thermostat's goal is to maintain the room at some particular temperature, right? And the actions it's going to take is, depending upon whether it's hot or cold, it's probably going to turn on the radiator or um, what? The air conditioning. It's probably going to turn something on, turn something off, but it's going to maintain that steady temperature, right? So that's its goal, and that's the action it's taking. So a more complicated or sophisticated uh, agent would be a chess AI. So in the case of a chess AI, if it's playing for the color white, then its goal could be that it has to bring the black opponent's king to checkmate, right? So its goal is to win the game, and the actions it's going to take to win the game are it's going to move pieces. So when we look at this in comparison, we can see that a thermostat is comparatively very simple. And a chess AI, on the other hand, seems very sophisticated compared to this one. But the thing is, again, a chess AI cannot do the thermostat's job. So a chess AI on the chessboard does not have any particular point where it can say, oh, going to this point is going to change the temperature. That doesn't happen. So our thermostat and our chess AI both fall into a narrow stream of artificial intelligence, as in they can perform only one task. So they're, they're skilled in only one task, and their goal is that, and they take actions to further those goals. So again, time for a question. So can anybody give me an example of an agent? Yes? Self-driving cars. Okay. The of the self-driving car is said to reach from one point to another. Mm -hmm. and actually to take it by determining obstacles on the uh, shortest path. Okay, and driving. Right? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Okay. Uh, the girl with the green shirt. Yes, you. Uh, introduce yourself. Say that this is intelligent and this is not. We have to have some kind of 
defining criteria, right? So uh, they're all different in their own, right? It's not like we have something to define that this is the best AI. But once we start looking at it, see, in the case of the chess AI, if I was taking a chess AI and making it play with another chess AI, so the one that would win among this, I would conclude that as the smartest AI. So that's something we could consider as intelligence. But putting it into a broader terminology, we could say that intelligence is the thing that lets an agent choose effective actions. So when I say effective actions, the thing is, um, giving a goal is easy. We can have goals, and again, choosing objectives is also hard. But choosing effective actions to further yourself in that goal, we can do it in any way, right? Uh, it might not be the smartest way or something, but it can be an efficient way. So in the case of an AI, all it thinks about is completing that goal, right? So it has to choose an effective action, one that is good, like the most optimized one. So again, we will sooner or later build an artificial intel agent with general intelligence. So let's look into general intelligence now. Okay, so when we're talking about generality, I think the highest form of general intelligence is human beings, basically, our brain, right? So we are capable of doing a wide number of tasks. So generality is the ability to behave intelligently in a wide range of domains. So uh, look at us, we multitask things. We don't have particular, like, only this is my goal. We do a lot of things on the way to achieve those goals. And that's simultaneously taking care of a lot of other goals, which might not be kept particularly as a goal like we do in AI. But human beings are the highest form of general intelligence. So when you think of it, so the thing is, in the case of human beings, we have to see that the important like diversifying character is that we are able to take actions to achieve goals that evolution never prepared us for. For example, like you talked about cars and stuff. So we created cars. Cars were never there from the beginning, right? We created cars and we learned how to drive cars. That's basically our own creation, right? So we can do that. Evolution never pre prepared us for that. So what we can also do is we can build rockets. We can take those rockets to the surface of the moon and that is unknown territory, right? We don't know how the surface of the moon is. Like, personally, we don't know it. So we can take our rocket and land it on the moon. And here's the crazy part. We can also build a car, we can build a rocket, we can put that car on the rocket, and then we can take that rocket and land it on the moon. Okay, uh, that slide comes later, actually. Okay. Okay, this is what I was saying. Generality is the ability to behave intelligently in a wide range of domains. So, as I was saying, we can take cars on the moon and we can operate them on the moon. So this is what I mean when we're talking about general intelligence, the way human beings do it. So that's a level of intelligence that AI will have to reach someday. And it's not like it's impossible because the human brain does it. And the human brain is, again, it's not magic. So let's see in the case of AI. Okay. Okay, so this is an AI. Uh, so it's actually by DeepMind and it's playing an Atari game. So I know it looks a bit like retro 90s kind of game, but actually this is a pretty intelligent AI. So it's actually getting a lot of points there. So it's playing one Atari game here and it's learned and it's trained itself to play that game. So the AI that's playing one Atari game becomes a narrow AI, like how, how I was talking about the thermostat and the chess AI. So this is a narrow AI. So uh, DeepMind in one of its earliest triumphs, it was able to develop this kind of AI that was capable of playing multiple Atari games, you know, dozens of them, different, different games. So this, in this case, it has multiple different kinds of Atari games. So this becomes closer to what I'm talking about, generalized AI. And yeah, so I think that sums up the keywords from this. So I think you guys understand we will sooner or later build an artificial intelligence with general intelligence, what that means now. So around 45 to 120 years to build something like us, basically. So now the question is, um, 
what is the biggest problem, right? Everything I'm saying, it more or less sounds like a benefit, you know? AI will be doing our work for us, and if it becomes intelligent like us, we could basically use it to deploy a lot of things and do a lot of things that could better the world, right? So that seems like a benefit. So we, the question is, what is it that we are talking about when we talk about this general intelligence, and why am I focusing so much about it when I say AI safety? So the thing is, we can actually develop something that might also be bad, right? So let's see that. Okay. So in that sense, uh, this is actually a game. Uh, again, I think it's by uh, Openheim. I'm not really sure. So this is a game called Post Runner. So what we see in this game is it's being played by an, an AI system. So what's happening in this game is it's actually a racing game. So we can see that over here, uh, that boat that we're supposed to be using as a player that's racing currently by the AI right now, what it's doing is it's, it's going around, it's spinning itself in circles, it's dashing into everything, catching fire. So what's happening when it's catching fire is you can see those small green things, so those are turbo pickups. So every time it goes around and catches fire, these turbo pickups, they respawn at just the right amount of time. So they can just fling itself around, and every time it does that, um, okay, the score is not visible here, but every time it does that, when it picks up turbo, it gets a few points. So this AI actually realized that it is much more convenient to do that and to get more points than it is to actually race in the game. So that's, that's pretty smart, right? So this, this is just one example. And the thing is that, so the thing is, this, this is not anything unusual. It's not like the deep mind AI is doing something stupid and that was a malfunction. No, it's not. This is just the default. This is how AI systems are. They look for loopholes and then they look for the best way to do something. It might not always be the way that we are expecting it. We might ask for something really good for it to do and it might take the most drastic, terrifying measure to do it. But in the end, it's going to do it right. So that's how AI is. And in this over here, this is another example. So they were trying to train and simulate these artificial agents that could run really quickly. So they were simulating them for a small amount of time, and they were letting those AI create these agents. So what they realized was, in this, uh, in this simulation, what the AI started doing was, it started developing these creatures that had a really long, thin body and a very great point of mass on the top. So what they were doing there, um, the measures that they were looking at to define the speed was, they were seeing the movement of the center of mass, how fast it moves. So that AI actually learned that it's easier to build these long, tall creatures and just fall over, and it would move. It would move a significant amount of distance, which it wouldn't be able to move if it was running. So this is what AI systems are doing. They're doing stuff like this. It's not exactly what we were looking for, but yeah. Okay. And another example is, uh, so there was this Tetris game, an AI that played the Tetris game. So it used to play reasonably well. So it used to play well and well, it would win, but eventually at some time, if you guys have played Tetris as a kid, you know, you will lose at some time, right? So this AI, it started playing, it would play reasonably well, and as soon as it realized that it was gonna lose, it would pause the screen. It just stopped playing. So. See, it's smart. So it realized that if it doesn't want to lose, by staying on the pause screen indefinitely, it's not losing any points. So basically it's not losing, right? So it would just pause the game and keep it at that. So you see, it's not an accident. This is the default. This is how AI systems are. And this is just a small scale, scale we're looking at. So in a larger scale, you, can, you guys can just question yourself and think what kind of measures would it take and you know, it might just take these sillier, stupid measures to achieve some goal, but it'll do it. Okay. So, uh, yes. So this is a quote from Stuart Russell. Uh, he's a professor and he wrote a book on AI. So it says that, a system that is optimizing a function of n variables where the objective depends on a subset of size k less than n will often set the remaining unconstrained variables to extreme values. If one of those unconstrained variables is something we care about, the solution found may be highly undesirable. Uh, I know it looks like a lot of gibberish, but I'm gonna explain what this means. So when we're talking in our real world situation, 
So here it says that uh, a system that is optimizing a function of n variables. So when we're considering our real life, uh, real world scenario right now, n variables is basically everything. All of you sitting here, every single thing in our world and our universe is part of these n variables. When you're considering a robot or something that's that's you know that's operating in real life scenario, that would be our n variables. So I'll just um, I'll give a small example. Okay. We'll take the most basic form of AI. Um, suppose I develop this robot, um, this AI, and I told it to bring me a cup of coffee. So when you hear that, that seems like a very simple goal, right? A cup of coffee, and probably I told it the kitchen is over there, get me a cup of coffee. So in the case of this AI robot, so what it's gonna do, its goal in its mind is bringing me a cup of coffee. That's the only thing that matters to it. So it knows that the kitchen is over there, and what it's gonna do, it probably cares so much about fulfilling its goal that it goes really fast to the kitchen to get my cup of coffee and therefore, you know, successfully finish its goal. So while doing that, suppose there was something like a, a was in the way. Was, vase, I don't know what people call it, but I say was. So suppose there was like a flower was or something in the middle. And this robot, it doesn't care about the walls, right? All that's important to it is getting a cup of coffee. So it's gonna rush in and it's gonna break that walls. So the thing here is n variables. That our n variables could be the coffee, the walls, and all of that. But the subset that mattered to it was only the coffee. It was not both the coffee and the walls, right? So in this scenario, what I could do is I could I could probably shut it down, I could probably reprogram it, and now I can tell it. So there's also a was over there. You have, you have to take care of that was while getting me my coffee. So yeah, we could do that and well, so that would work. But the question is, how many times am I gonna do that? How many more variables will, they, will there be? So every time we consider a bunch of variables as important, it means we're actually compromising on the other variables which we're not considering important. If I don't tell it that this is important, this should, have some significant value to it. It's not gonna care about it at all. So that's gonna be destroyed completely. It has a chance of being destroyed. So that's the case in the real world scenario. When we're considering this, when we consider something important, there will always be a trade-off that we're making. You know, It can either be like, I can do this faster, but it might not be that reliable. You know, Or I can take more time to do it, and it will be reliable, but I have to take a lot of time. Or if I spend extra money, I might be able to do something, I create something that is very reliable, but again, it costs too much money. And if you want to do something that's cheap, it's not reliable. So you see, that's, that's just kind of, those are some examples. There's always something we're trading off, you know? So it does sound good that we have AI and we could probably tell it someday if it reaches our level of intelligence, you know, like find a cure to cancer or maximize the profit of my company and stuff like that. But then again, it doesn't care about the rest of the stuff. So until and unless you tell it that something is important, it's not important to it. So we could probably go to some extent and we can I mean, we can find out like some 20, um, 20 values or things that are valuable to human beings. We can train that on AI and say these are the most like important 20 things that humans value. But when it comes to the 21st thing, the 21st thing might be gone forever if you don't tell it that it's important. So that becomes a very big problem, right? So um, the example that I just gave about that robot bringing me coffee was very unrealistic in one major way. So what do you guys think was unrealistic about that example? It wasn't very real time kind of thing, so, so just Think about it again for a minute and see what about that example seemed not practical. So, yes? Uh, okay. So you think that's the biggest problem, how much coffee yes. I want, right? Yeah. Everyone has a different opinion of drinking coffee. Yeah. Some might like having one cup of coffee or someone like two cup of coffee that mm. That is the biggest problem. Okay. I like your answer because it's kind of nice. So we can give them a book, but yeah. Uh, anybody else? Uh, yes. With the white shirt? Yes, sir.
take only a few things into consideration like you only when we add something then only it considers it as a main thing mm -hmm. so even if uh, we consider a wall then next time something or the other uh, thing which is uh, on the uh, on the floor might mm -hmm. come up and it might destroy that okay so the scenario which i explained 20 things 21st thing is a problem yes okay that's good uh you can give him one uh yes Thank you. And so, uh, yeah, I think you guys took the example. Oh, well, that's the last one. Okay. So uh, I think you guys took that example very seriously uh, with the coffee constraint, but oh, okay. I was looking at it in a more broader perspective, but yeah, those were good answers. So the most unrealistic thing about this was, you remember when I said it's going too fast and it breaks the flower boss? So I said after that scenario, I would just take it, I'd shut it down and I'd reprogram it. So that was very unrealistic. Because if you actually created general intelligence, there is no concept of turning it off. Because that intelligence is just like a human being and it knows that you're gonna turn it off. So that AI would do anything in its power to make sure that you're not gonna turn it off, right? Because it's like a human being. If I do something wrong, that somebody's gonna hit me, I'm gonna try not to do it wrong, right? I'm gonna do anything in my power to make sure that I'm not hit or turned off in this case. So, um, so that AI, it would know that you're gonna turn it off if it does something wrong like that, right? So what it's gonna do, it has general intelligence. Basically everything in the world is part, is part of its like simulation. It knows all these criteria. So it, at some point, has already predicted that it might be turned off. Even though it's malfunctioning, it might go to an extent like it could, um, I could pretend that it's working fine. It could deceive you, you know? I'm working fine, I'm purposely not gonna break that was because you're gonna turn me off and if you turn me off, I can't finish my life's goal of bringing you coffee. So that's how it is in the form of that. Or it could go to greater extents and do something else. Like, so it, it deceives me or it acts like it's working fine. It could bring me to a position where I can't turn it off like for whatever reasons. Or, um, that AI, so the way I was talking, like the cup of coffee is important to it and the laws is important to it, now, right? So another problem that comes in that case is, so yeah, now the coffee is important and the laws is important. So that general AI has the ability to think. So now that laws is also something that is of value to it, right? And it's thinking um, nothing is supposed to happen to that wall. So suppose there's a human who's also living in that house and they're very clumsy. And the AI thinks, oh, this human might fall over and he might break the laws. So it goes to the extent of killing that human. So that is also something. Unless we tell it that this human being's life is important, it doesn't know that it's important, right? It could go on and it could kill them. So that was, um, that was what uh, general intelligence. So artificial general intelligence is dangerous by default. As I was saying, there are a lot of, there are a lot of things that go into it, you know? Like, it's very hard to choose these objectives, and it's hard to choose actions to further ourselves in these object objectives in the way that we actually want it. So this AI could be doing a lot of stuff to further its goal, and it could be doing them in very bad ways, right? So that becomes a problem. So artificial general intelligence is actually very dangerous. So uh, there is a concept called Broco's Basilisk. Now this is, wait, where's the last book? Oh, I have one, right? Okay, I will be giving some of in my book. So, Roko's Basilisk is something that I actually first heard when I was watching uh, the TV show Silicon Valley. Anybody seen it? Okay, great. So, do you guys remember what Roko's Basilisk was? You know, Guilfoyle is talking about Roko's Basilisk. It's a thought experiment, a concept. You think about it, you know? Yes, please.
not consider that person. So, uh, what does Rokos does list mean is, uh, there's a, uh, a AI bias can have a, a serious effects on who the data, who, who is giving data. <coughs> mm -hmm. What data it has taken, mm -hmm. that will have a huge bias on uh, what type of AI system mm -hmm. that it will be. Okay. So if it has bias, it will be affecting the person it's, it's trying to differentiate from or categorize. Uh, that's not exactly right. Does anybody else know it? Exactly correct. So uh, you'll be getting the last book. Uh, I'm sorry, that answer was actually wrong, but it made it made sense. It just wasn't Rocco's Basilisk. So. Okay. Congratulations for the last book. So okay. So Rocco's Basilisk. So what happened was there was a website called Less Wrong. So Less Wrong was this discussion forum, kind of like Reddit. So one day this guy, they were all talking about AI and all that stuff, and this guy called Roko, he posted this comment on the website. So what if in the future a somewhat malevolent AI were to come about and punish those who did not do its bidding? What if there was a way for this AI to punish people today who are not helping it come into existence later? So basically what happened after he posted this, I think it was deleted or something, and the guy who founded that website, he schooled him, he wrote a comment, and he was like, if this was ever to happen, the worst mistake you could ever make is to actually say it out loud right now. Because if that AI were to ever come, then basically us, or uh, me, I would be attacked, right? Because I wouldn't be helping it turn into the dictator, like Terminator. So that is Roko's Basilisk. So all of us who are not helping it to become that in the future, well, it's probably going to punish us someday. So, yeah. So that brings us to the question: Are we screwed? So, well, we're not screwed completely. Well, not yet. So we have time, right? Forty-five to one hundred and twenty years. So that is where AI safety all comes in. So there are a lot of people who are doing research, and there is significant amount of research and money that's going into this right now. So that friend I told you about, he actually got a 21,000 grant just to do research on this and bring awareness about it. So you see, there there is a lot of effort and strive that's being gone into AI safety research. So there are people who are trying to inculcate these human-like empathy and ethics inside an AI so that it might not reach that level of dictatorship or anything evil. So yeah it's kind of like we just we just have to hope and probably contribute to make sure that that doesn't happen and again if it does then maybe you know Rocco's Basilisk we might be punished for it so I guess right now that is what we can do we can hope and we can put efforts and that is a very big technical problem so the thing about this it's getting a lot of attention now like it's a booming field but the thing is there is no proper exact thing like if you're putting some constraints and doing it uh, you know you're putting something, you're, you're trying to make a difference, then it might affect it in some other way. So it becomes a really big problem. You have to come up with very good algorithms, and it has to think like a human being. And the problem is not all human beings are good, right? They're also bad human beings. So how do you make an AI that is purely good? So I guess we can just cross our fingers and hope that one day, if we actually succeed, then we'll be building a good one, right? Because this is something that we actually only have one shot at. Because the first time we create this artificial general intelligence, it could be the bad one. It could be the one that wants us all. So I think we, the thing is it's much more easier to build a bad AI, one that makes all these mistakes and doesn't consider everything. It's easier to build a bad AI than it is to teach one human ethics, empathy, good human ethics and empathy, and to make it like wall -A, basically. So that becomes the problem, right? So what we can do is we can, you know, we can put some research efforts into this or make some kind of strive to make sure that it doesn't happen. But it will someday and we are gonna build an AGI. But what we can hope is that the AGI that we build is gonna be a Wally -E and not a Terminator. 
And that being said, a uh, word of caution, when you guys are talking to your Google Assistant next time, just be a little nice to her, okay? So, thank you.